Hi guys, I hope you're okay and having a good day. So in this video, I'm going to go over the important things to remember for the ESA and PIP assessment and go over what to expect, basically. So one of the things that you want to try and do is record the assessment. You can do that on your phone if your phone does that or you may want to get hold of a voice recorder which if you've got chronic illnesses this may be a better option for you as you do it as you do the assessments over and over again for your chronic illness journey. What you do have to do is inform them that you're recording it, you don't have to have their permission it's important that you make sure that you take somebody with you and take them into the assessment room with you as well. They can prompt you if you forget something or you're having trouble finding the words. And also, some people say that they're watching you as soon as you appear on their video surveillance videos until you drop off. I'm not convinced how this is going to be possible in all centres. The centre that I go to up here, there's only usually one or two of you in the waiting room at the same time, but the receptionist doesn't seem bothered about watching you. In the centre in Birmingham that I went to, there was more like 50 people in the waiting room at the same time, so I don't really see how five, set, five receptionists can keep an eye on 50 people and how they can pick everybody out on the surveillance cameras. As far as the assessment is concerned, the assessor will come out and collect you and whoever you bring with you and take you back to the room. They'll start by asking the questions and this can take a long time or a short time depending on how severe your disabilities are and how your disabilities affect you and unfortunately dodgy assessors will try to trip you up by saying things like oh we're not interested in what you can't do we're only interested in what you can do they're trying to get you to tell them what they want to hear from you to take it off you one assessor went so low as to when she realized that ploy didn't work she accused me of having a filthy bedroom. Yeah. That assessor took it off me, the ESA off me, and I ended up getting it back at tribunal. I got every penny paid back to me, and they were told to leave me alone for three years. So I came out on top in the end. Having said that, the last assessor was amazing. She was definitely a decent assessor. She was a doctor. She understood chronic fatigue syndrome. She understand POTS, understood POTS, which not many doctors do understand those conditions well enough. But make sure that when you're answering the questions that you give answers of what it's like on a bad day for you. And Try to be consistent with what's on your questionnaire because they will go through your questionnaire and they're looking for consistency in the answers as well. Once they've done the questionnaire, they'll move on to the medical part of it, which it's not so much a medical as it is a series of tasks. So three of the things that they ask you, there's several, but three of the things that they ask you are to put your hands behind your back, to raise your arms above your shoulders, excuse me, and then they will ask you to sit on a couch and then raise your legs one at a time. And whatever you do, whether it be the questions or the medical, make sure you do it based on your bad days because they need to get the picture of how severe it gets. Now, what they do with that will depend on whether they're a dodgy doctor or a decent assessor. Dodgy assessor or decent assessor. But you will have, if you do these things, you will have done the best that you 
possibly can. And even if you do have it taken off you, which I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, even if you do have it taken off you, you can get it back. There is a way to get it back and we'll look at that in the next video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.